thrilling hyperviolent vision of the future from the producers of Get Out, The Purge, and the creator of Saw and Insidious. This is Upgrade. Upgrade? That's an interesting name. With two Ds, as he says, for a double dose of this pimping. Hello, I'm Tony G, and welcome to the Movie Bookie. Today we're talking Upgrade. And in all seriousness, I'm excited about this one. You're excited? Feel these nipples! Basically, it's a story of a mechanic from the future who keeps his street cred by working on old cars. His family is brutally attacked and killed by a merciless band of street toughs led by this old-timey western bartender. They leave him for dead and he ends up in a paraplegic state. This is a bummer, man. That's, uh, that's a bummer. Well, either way, it's the future. So naturally, a 17-year-old scientist who was most likely the bad guy at the end, got 5-1 to one on that, shows up and offers him a microchip for his brain that allows him to walk again so he can exact his revenge. I understand the system operating your body for you. Basically a brain pal from the old man's war novels. Or if you're not into John Scalzi, he's essentially a cyborg. Part man, part machine. Underneath it's a hyper alloy combat chassis. Microprocessor controlled. Fully armored. Very tough. But outside it's living human tissue. Uh, yeah, well, that feels like a lot. Maybe he's more like a ninja. While I am state of the art, I am not a ninja. Fine, he's a mechanic with a computer in his brain. Let's just move on. The story is basically Robocop meets Taken with a pinch of man on fire. It's starring Trey Atwood from the OC. And before you ask, because you didn't know or even care, he's this guy. You were way too good at this because I've lost like 10 times in a row. Yeah, well, I was all Chino and drinking. What a dick. This is not bad though. He's held his own in Alien Covenant and Prometheus, and this looks like this first great big push is a full blown leap. Wait a minute, that's still him getting roasted like a marshmallow in Prometheus. I can't really talk shit about this one. It looks entertaining. Was gonna take odds on how the guy with the gun for a hand was gonna die, but the trailer solved that mystery. Wow, a lot of action. A lot of action. This one's pretty obvious though. Got three to one says Trey dies. He has to, it just makes sense. We've seen him die before. If that is a range, I don't know what is. All track records aside, if your family is dead and you're on a nothing to lose tech aided killing spree, chances are you're about to meet a grisly end. You look revenge that way. Start by digging to a grave. Or five or six, depending on how far you want to go with it. Not that I'm encouraging that. I am not telling you to go on a shooting rampage. Blumhouse Productions is behind this, and they've got a pretty good track record themselves on delivering a thrilling, if not downright frightening, atmosphere on most of their work. Even if it's not a horror movie, even though they seem to specialize in those. For the most part, anything they do is designed to create some type of visceral reaction. Take this, for instance. He's not just any dog. He's Benji. You named him? No matter what reaction you just had to that, I'm sure it was quite visceral. They remade Benji. Anyway... It is quite refreshing to see a studio do things that don't require a superhero and actually have success. This is important for what we would actually call originality in Hollywood, but let's face it, there's like six stories and everybody's remixing them. Judging by the trailer, I'm gonna set the over-under in this at 200 million. I know it's a lofty bar, but I think this one can get there. It's generally a newish idea mixed over an existing storyline that just about anybody can get behind. Plus, it looks fun. The last time I saw a movie that had someone with a weapon for a limb, I, I was pleasantly surprised. And I don't want to make an irrational blanket statement or anything, but every time that happens in a movie, somebody has a weapon for a limb, it's pretty damn watchable. I'm setting odds at upgrade of 5 to 1 that it's actually going to be good. I don't want to throw numbers around, but reinventing the wheel works like 5% of the time, and smart producers don't do that. They don't get paid to reinvent the wheel, they just stick a fire-ass rim on it and ride that bitch till it falls off. And this seems a lot like what's going on here. Pimp game. This looks like a full price date movie, but not a first date movie. This looks pretty good, so you'd be tempted to pay attention to the movie and not your date, which is what you're supposed to be doing on a first date. Unless my math is off, this one looks like a safe bet. I wish I'd picked a crappier movie to go ahead and do my first video on, but I think I'm okay with it because honestly, I feel like I'm telling you the truth. Let me know in the thumbs whether you're with me or against me. Tune in next time when I attempt to make odds on what appears to be a thousand solo movie trailers. Gotta be kidding me.